Hello, Michael Burks here. Today we're going to talk about PDM performance. More specifically, we're going to talk about SQL performance. As PDM administrators, we've all received phone calls that PDM is not acting right, or maybe it's slow. Whether it's a transition or a check-in, check-out that's taking a really long time, to maybe search results that are taking a lot longer than they normally do. So we want to take a look at a few options on our SQL server to make sure that we can get the best performance out of our server. First thing is I want us to look at the power options. So log into your SQL server, go to the hardware and sounds in the control panel, go to power options, and then make sure that your power options are set for high performance. We want to make sure that SQL Server has access to all of the processing power that the server has to offer. And by setting this to high performance, this will allow us to make sure that that's the case. Next, we want to talk about SQL Server settings and some database settings. So let's jump into Management Studio. So I'm going to right click on my SQL Server instance and I'm going to go to Properties. One of the first things I want you to look at is the memory. By default, SQL Server is set to use over two terabytes of memory. Now, most of us don't have two terabytes of memory, so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna drop mine down to just over 12 gigs of memory here. Now, I have 16 gigs of memory in my server, so I'm limiting SQL to 12 gigs of memory. Now, this is because I'm gonna leave Windows a little bit of room to run. I'm gonna leave the archive server and the SNL manager that I'm running on the same server. I'm gonna leave them some room to run as well. I don't want SQL to take up all that to where I can't log into the Windows server operating system. I can't make changes. I wanna make sure that I leave a little bit of room for all these other things to run. So I'm gonna make that change first. Now I'm going to go look at my vault database and take a look at the properties of it. So one of the first things I want you to do is look at the options. So when you go to options, you'll notice there's a recovery model. Is it simple or is it full? If you have a DBA that's on staff and they understand how to do backups and how to, how to manage the transaction log, then make sure that they're aware of your vault database and tell, they probably want to set it to full and they can help you manage that. If you don't have a DBA or if you don't have somebody who understands SQL and how to manage it, maybe leave it on simple this way as you're doing all of your standard maintenance. SQL Server is kind of helping you manage that data a little bit easier. It's not relying on you to make all these decisions. The next thing I want you to look at is the files. So when you go here, you'll notice the size of your database as well as the size of the log file. Now, if you'll notice the auto growth, a couple things I want you to do here, make sure that you set this to megabytes, don't set it to one. Set this to something more realistic. In my case, maybe like 500 megs. So I don't want it to grow one meg at a time because if SQL Server needs to grow 30 megs, then what it's going to do is it's going to continually grow one meg at a time until it gets to the size that it needs. By giving it a bigger growth number, it means it's only going to grow so often and it's going to create performance hits for that growth. The log file, I'll do the same thing for the log file. Now I typically don't let it grow quite as often as, as the other one, maybe 250 megs here. You can do a percentage on the log if you want, maybe around 10%, and then maybe set it to unlimited as well so that we don't limit the space that it uses. Now in my case, my log size seems a little bit big to me. I don't want it to be quite that big. So I wanna go look and see, maybe this is causing me some performance issues for my users that are having a long, uh, that's taking a long time for them to search. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. I'm gonna go take a look at something. I'm gonna right click and go to task and I'm gonna to go to shrink and I'm gonna to go to files. Now, I don't recommend you shrinking anything without talking to the MLC support staff or without talking to a DBA who understands the ramifications of a shrink. This is not something we would recommend. However, it does give you the ability to see what's going on with your database. So if you'll notice here, my database has 17% free space. So that's good. We've got some growth. We've got some area to write some stuff into the database. I want to now switch it to the log file. So when I switch to the log file, you'll notice here that I have over 99% free space. So this is actually causing some problems for my users because instead of just being able to search and query for data, SQL is actually having to look through a lot of free space in order to find the data that it's looking for. And so this is slowing my searches down quite a bit. So if you're in a simple recovery model, this is something that you could shrink the log file down to. Now, I typically don't recommend shrinking it all the way down to zero. You might reorganize it and shrink it down to something a little more manageable, maybe like four gigs in my case. So you can actually do that. Once again, we do request that you either talk to us about that or that you talk to your DBA about that as well. So hopefully today, some of these things that we've talked about 
our server settings, the instant settings in SQL, or the database settings, go take a look at those. You might find that you can increase your PDM performance simply by making a few changes to your SQL, to your SQL server. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.